okay so we are going to uh, in this course throughout we will study we are discussing that by just changing the working of protocol we can improve the performance of network without changing the physical links and router so just by changing the working of protocol without changing physical resources and we improve the performance multiple times okay so in the la if you do remember so throughout this book we will study it and let me remind to you that we have studied some examples so let me remind to you those examples okay so yes and we have discussed the packet switching that instead of sending the whole message in one packet we should divide the message into multiple packets it will reduce the time it will reduce the end to end delay okay so we have already discussed it at this example so this was one example okay so now we are discussing another example okay so up to now we have discussed rdt 3.0 and it is stop and wait stop and wait what does it mean that when the sender transmit the one packet then it waits it waits it waits until the acknowledgement is received the feedback is received if the acknowledgement is received then the next packet will be transmitted although the sender has multiple packets but it sends one packet at a time it sends one packet at a time and until the first packet is is delivered correctly the next packet will not be transmitted okay so this is called stop and wait okay so you can see that when packet 1 is transmitted so it takes some time transmission time what is the transmission time transmission time is that the when the first bit of the packet is transmitted on the link so in a, to the time when the last pack bit of the packet is transmitted on the link so this time this is called transmission time this is the time when the whole bit is transmitted from computer to the link and now the data the bits they are moving toward the receiver so this is called transmission time and now the bits are moving so here the sender is waiting the sender is waiting why because this data is moving toward the receiver it takes some time and when it is received okay so we are using stop and wait when first bit of the packet is arrived so it will be stored until the last bit is arrived so when the whole data is arrived then the receiver sends the acknowledgement okay so when in the acknowledgement is transmitted so it also takes some time okay so it also take some time so when it is received so the acknowledgement is arrived okay okay so if you do uh, so it means that so how much time it takes so the time taken for this packet it is the time that is from here to here okay so this is the time that the packet is transmitted correctly from sender to receiver and the acknowledgement is transmitted by receiver to sender so this is whole time and this time includes from here to here this is the transmission time transmission time means the time taken to transmit the data from computer over the links and when this is done this is this transmission time it depends on it is equal to l by r l means the size of the packet r means the bandwidth of the network of the link so we have already discussed it and now when the transmission is finished the sender is waiting this is rtt what is rtt rtt means when the last bit it takes time to move from sender to receiver and then when acknowledgement moves from the receiver to sender so this is rtt from here to here this is called 
RTT round trip time. Okay, so the total time taken is equal to L by R. This is L by R this time and RTT. So RTT plus LR. So this is the total time taken by the packet. Okay, so this time you can see this RTT is a big portion. And here the sender is waiting. It is idle. Okay. So suppose to explain it through some example, numerical example. Suppose L by R is equal to 2 seconds. This transmission time is equal to 2 seconds. Suppose. And this RTT is equal to 8 seconds. Okay. So the total time taken by this P1 packet, it is equal to L by R plus RTT is equal to 2 plus 8, 10. Okay. And now the sender wants to send the next packet. Okay. So again, the next packet P2, it is transmitted. Suppose the size of P1 and P2 is equal. So P2, it will take the same transmission time. So P2 will uh, packet, the sender will start the transmission of P2 packet after the acknowledgement of the packet 1 is arrived. Okay, because it is stop and wait. We transmit one packet at a, at a time. Okay. So P2 transmission will start at t is equal to 10 when the acknowledgement is received. So acknowledgement of P1 is received at 10 seconds. So after it's 10 seconds, the P2 transmission will be started. And this it is also size is equal to P1. P2 size is equal to P1. So it will take again 2 seconds. So up to 12th second, the P2 packet last bit is transmitted on the link. And now it is moving. Okay. Again, the RTT is, is equal to how much? RTT is equal to 8 seconds. Because we have assumed. So when the, when the P2 packet will be received. So the transmission has started at 0. So it will again, it also take 10 seconds. So 2 plus 10. Okay. So when the acknowledgement of P2 will arrives. So the acknowledgement of P2 will arrives after 10 seconds. So, so 10 for uh, 10 seconds for the P1 and 10 seconds for P2. So this is equal to 20 seconds. So in the stop and wait operation, when one packet is transmitted at a time. So if we send two packets, then it will take 20 seconds according to these assumptions. Okay. Now, what is pipeline protocol? Let me explain it. Pipeline pack protocol means again, suppose we are sending uh, two packets. We are sending two packets, P1 and P2. And again, the P1 packet is transmission is started at t is equal to 0. So at t is equal to 0, this transmission is started and it will take 2 seconds to transmit the packet P1. 2 seconds means that at 2 seconds, the last bit of P1 packet is transmitted on the link. And now the packet is moving. So in the pipeline protocol, when one packet is transmitted, its acknowledgement is not received yet. P2 packet is also started, its transmission is restarted. Is, is P2 packet is also transmitted. Okay. Okay. So when the uh, packet number uh, one, its transmission is uh, finished at two seconds. So the sender also start transmission of P2 at two seconds. Okay. So P2 transmission will finish at T is equal to four seconds. And now the sender is waiting for their acknowledgement. So pipeline means when sender sent multiple packet at a time. Multiple packet at a time. Okay, so in this case, when P2 packet is P1 packet is transmitted, so it is transmitted in two seconds. Transmitted means that the P2 one packet is moved from this machine computer to the leg, and now the packet is moving on. And P2 packet is also transmitted. When P1 packet transmission is finished, P2 is also transmitted, and now both packets are 
moving on and the legs okay so what is the rtt rtt is 8 second so p1 packet transmission is finished so now its rtt will be 8 second and now p2 packet transmission is finished at 4 second so what is rtt 8 second so how much time it will take 8 okay so in this case you can see that the p1 packet its transmission is finished at 2 second and its rtt is 8 second so when its acknowledgement will be arrived so the p1 packet acknowledgement will arrive at 10 second okay so we have assumed that l, uh, l by r is equal to 2 second and rtt is 8 second so p1 packet will be its acknowledgement will be arrived at 10 second and when the acknowledgement of p2 packet will arrive so in, in, you know that p2 packet is transmitted at 4 second a 2 second its p2 packet transmission is started after p1 packet so after 2 second it takes transmission time okay so at 4 second its trans its its last bit the p2 last bit is transmitted okay so after 4 and 8 why because 8 second is the rtt time okay so 4 plus 8 so after 12 second p2 acknowledgement will arrive okay so after 12 second p2 acknowledgement will arrive it means that after 12 second p1 and p2 they both are delivered to the receiver and their acknowledgement is received so here the both p1 and p2 packet they are transmitted in 12 second and in the stop and wait stop and wait here in the stop and wait both p1 and p2 they are transmitted in 20 second so stop and wait is better or pipeline so the pipeline approach is better pipeline approach is better so the pipeline approach is better okay so the pipeline approach is better why it is better why it is better because it takes 12 second it takes 12 second and so it delays less so we didn't change the physical resources l by r is same rtt is same we just changed the protocol working so in the pipeline protocol we sense multiple packet at a time the p1 packet acknowledgement is not received but we transmitted the p2 packet as well so these two packets are in the flag this is called pipe plant. Okay, so in the pipe plant, additive pipe plant, so we send multiple packets at a time. So it will it, it will have less delay. It will have less delay. So it is more efficient than stop and wait. And why? Because here this waiting time is reduced. <laughs> waiting time is reduced. The, the, these links are busy busy for longer time. Okay, in the stop and wait, one packet was transmitted, then it was waiting. So there was long waiting time. RTT for the one packet, RTT for the next packet. But here we are using the resources more efficiently. Okay, so this is the pipeline protocol. Okay. So now let me explain to you the RTT, uh, uh, this pipeline protocol is better then the stop and wait through another example so this is one example this pipeline protocol is better than stop and wait let me explain to you another example another numerical example okay so in the rtt 3.0 stop and wait okay rtt 3.0 stop and wait stop and wait mean when we send one packet at a time we send one packet and then waits for its acknowledgement. When its acknowledgement is received, then the next packet is transmitted. This is called stop and wait. So the RDT 3.0 stop and wait protocol is correct, but its performance is stinks. Why? We let me explain it to another example. Suppose we have the link, it is the 1 Gbps, 1 gigabit per second. This is its length bandwidth capacity. 
and suppose the propagation delay is 15 milliseconds and the packet size is 8000 bits okay so what will be the transmission time as you know that we have discussed if you know it in the previous example what is the total time that a packet takes the total time a packet takes means when the packet transmission is started and when its acknowledgement is received this is called total time and this total time includes two components transmission time and propagation time rtt so the transmission time it depends on the link bandwidth and the packet size l by r so it depends on l and r l means packet size r means bandwidth of the link and rtt propagation time okay so let's discuss it so one thing that note that this propagation time this rtt it includes propagation delay queuing delay processing delay all these things okay so if you do uh, so let's uh, discuss it through another example so the total time it includes transmission delay and it includes the propagation rtt so that what is the transmission time the size it is equal to l by r l means size of the message we have discussed it in the chapter number one if you do remember okay so l is equal to size of the packet so size of the packet is 8000 bit r means bandwidth of the link bandwidth of the link is 1 gbps so 8000 by 10 it is power 9 so what is it it is equal to 8 microsecond 0 0.008 millisecond okay we have utilization what does utilization means okay let me explain it utilization means the time when the sender is busy to send the data so here in this case in stop and wait the sender is busy for two seconds here then it is idle for eight seconds then it the sender is busy for two seconds and then it is idle for eight seconds so total in this 20 second the sender is utilizing the links busy for two seconds and two seconds four seconds and for busy and, and, and uh, free for uh, 8 second and 8 second so for 16 second it is free it is not utilizing and for 4 second it is using it is utilizing so 4 by 20 is the utilization ratio 4 by 20 because 4 second it is busy it is utilizing the link for 2 second and 2 second for 4 second it is utilizing the link and for the rest of the 16 second it is free so the total time is 20 so 4 by 20 is the utilization so out of 20 second only for 4 second the sender is busy is utilizing the link okay but in the pipeline approach you can see that in the pipeline approach in the pipeline approach the total time is the total time is 12 second and this 12 second for 4 second the sender is busy and for remaining 8 second it is free so 4 out of 12 4 out of 12 4 out of 4 by 12 this is the utilization time so 4 by 12 is less a 4 by 12 is more as compared to 4 by 20. So here the utilization is more in the pipeline approach. Utilization is more. More time, for more time the links are utilized. And for less time the links are busy. But in the stop and wait, for less time the link are utilized. And for more time the, they are free. The link are Right. Okay. So here, this is the utilization. So 
Utilization means that for the fraction of the time, the sender is busy to send the data. What does it mean? That the sender is utilizing the legs, the network. So the sender is busy for L by R. So L by R is equal to 0 0.08. And what is the total time? Total time is equal to RTT plus L by R. So RTT is 15 milliseconds from one side to another and from back. So 15 into 15, 30. So 30 is the RTT and L by R is equal to 0 0.08. So 30 plus this. So this RTT, this 15 millisecond is from one side. Okay. 15 millisecond is the time from here to here. This is 15 minute time. And when the acknowledgement is sent, so this 15 milliseconds. So the total RTT is equal to the time from here to here <coughs> and from receiver back to sender. So this is RTT. So RTT is 15 plus 15. 15 from here to here and 15 from for the acknowledgement. So 30 milliseconds RTT. So here RTT is equal to 30 seconds and L by R is equal to 0 0.08. So 30 plus 0 0.08. Uh, 0 0.008 so it is equal to 30.08 so here the utilization is equal to 0 0.0027 so this is utilization what does it mean that this time this fraction of time the sender is busy sending the data that the links the network is used okay so if the RTT is 30 millisecond, okay, so we have taken this example. Okay. Now we so this is the numeric example for stop and wait. And then low compute it for pipeline approach. So this is the working of stop and wait approach. You can see that stop and wait approach, first packet is transmitted, then we wait for the RTT for acknowledgement. Okay, so this is equal to 0 0.008 is the transmission time and RTT is 30. Why? 15 millisecond from here, propagation delay and 15 millisecond from this side. So this is the link utilization for stop and wait approach. 0 0.0027. Okay, now let's compute, compute this link utilization for the pipeline approach. Okay, suppose in the pipeline approach, what, what does it mean? Pipeline approach means we send more packets at a time. Then how many packets? Suppose we send three packets at a time. If we send three packets at a time, then what should be the sender utilization? So here we are sending three packets at a time. So we are sending three packets. Three packets means three into L by R. So it will take how much time? L by R for the first packet, L by R for the second packet, L by R for the third packet. So three, three packets are sent at a time. So three by eight, three into L by R is the transmission time. And how much is the RTT time? So RTT time is RTT plus L by R. Because when the last packet is transmitted, then it is waiting to send for the last bit of the last packet from here to here, and then the acknowledgement comes. So when this acknowledgement arrived, this is the RTT. This is the time. So from here to here, this is the RTT time. Within this time, the first acknowledgement will be received, the second acknowledgement will be received, but the whole data will be received after this. The last acknowledgement will be received at this time. When the last acknowledgement is received for the third packet. When the acknowledgement is received for the third packet. So this is the time. So how much it is the time? So from here to here, this is the transmission time for three packets. And from here to here, this is the RTT time for the last packet. And when the last packet, the third packet acknowledgement is received, within this time, the acknowledgement for the second and first packet will also be received. But this is the last acknowledgement, the acknowledgement for the third packet. So this depends on RTT for the third packet. So RTT is equal to 30 and L by R is equal to 0 0.08. So here, the, if we in the pipeline approach, if we send three packets at a time, then the link utilization is equal to 0 0.0081. So 81 is more, 0 0.0081, it is three times in the stop and wait. So it is more in, in this, 
in this pipeline example the link utilization is 0 0.0081 0 0.0081 and the stop and wait it was 0, 0 0.0027 so 27 is less as compared to 81 so here the performance is improved three times once you prove three, without changing the link bandwidth, the link bandwidth is same, the RTT is same. Just we change the working of protocol. Working of protocol means that we send three packets at a time instead of one packet. Okay. So this is called pipelining. Okay. So the pipelining approach improves the performance. However, it also have some challenges it also has some challenges the stop and wait and pipeline approach the pipeline protocol with we sense multiple packet at a time and the stop and wait we sense one packet at a time so the pipeline approach has better performance than the stop and wait we extend through example two examples even three examples so it means that pipeline approach is better. However, pipeline approach has its own challenges. So the performance of pipeline protocol is better than the stop and wait. However, the pipelining has its own challenges. What are these challenges? Let's discuss it. The first challenge is that, that the sequence number must be increased. In the stop and wait, we were using sequence number 0 and 1. And now here we are sending more packets at a time. So the sequence number should be increased. Why? Because if we send three packets, so the first packet it will have sequence number 0, second will have sequence number 1. And if the third packet also has sequence number 0, then this doesn't know that this is the first or the third packet. Okay, so we should increase the sequence number. Okay, so we should increase the sequence number. So the sequence number should be more than 0 and 1. So it will be like, for example, 8, 5, 7, depending upon how many packets are sent at a time. Okay, so this is the first challenge. The second challenge is that whether we should send acknowledgement feedback for individual packets or we should send cumulative acknowledgement. We should send cumulative acknowledgement. Okay, what does it mean? Let me explain. Suppose in this case, the pipeline approach, we are sending three packets. So when the first packet is received, its acknowledgement will be sent. This is one acknowledgement. And second packet is received, acknowledgement will be sent. Third packet is uh, not received, so its acknowledgement will not be received. It will not be sent. So here three acknowledgement are sent. This is called individual acknowledgement. If first packet is received, the acknowledgement one will be sent. If second packet is not received and third packet is received, then third packet acknowledgement is sent. This is called individual acknowledgement. And cumulative acknowledgement, we will also discuss it later on. Mean that when one, two, three packets are received, only one acknowledgement is sent. So one acknowledgement, it acknowledges all the previous packets. So which one is better? Both are better. Individual and cumulative, both are better. Okay. So we will discuss that the acknowledgement should be sent for individual packet or it should be cumulative. We will discuss what does it mean. Both, both are good. Both are okay. Both are better. Okay. Second, when we sense multiple packets, so the packet can have bad error or the packet can be lost. So therefore, the sender when sends a packet, so it is stored. Why? If that packet is lost, time is out, then the packet will be retransmitted. So it means that here we are sending one packet at a time. So we need buffer for one packet. And the pipeline approach, we are sending more than one packet at a time. So we need the buffer, large buffer at the sender site. This is one example. So we need large buffer both for sender and the receiver, of both of at sender side, both in individual acknowledgement and cumulative acknowledgement. 
Okay, whether you are using individual acknowledgement or you are using a, a complete acknowledgement, you need more buffer at center side. Okay, and we also need acknowledge the buffer at the receiver side. Why? Because if three packets are transmitted, packet one, two, three. Packet 2 and 3 are received and packet 1 is not received. It is lost. But packet 2 and 3 cannot be delivered to the application. Why? Because packet, the receiver is waiting for packet 1. Packet 1 will become, so they will become an order in sequence. Then the sequence data will be delivered. So it means the receiver also need buffer. When the data is received out of order, so they are stored. They are stored. So in the cumulative acknowledgement, the out of other packets are not stored. So it doesn't need the receiver buffer. In the individual acknowledgement, out of other packets are stored. So it the receiver needs buffer. Okay. This is the third challenge. The fourth challenge. You know that when we transmit a packet, we set its timer. Why? Because the packet can be lost. If the packet is lost, or acknowledgement is lost, then and the timer expires, then the packet will be retransmitted. So we have already discussed it in RDT 3.0. Okay. So here we are sending one packet at a time. So we need one timer in the stop and wait. But in the pipeline approach, we are sending more packets at a time. So whether we should have individual timer. Individual timer means that we are sending four packets. Then for each packet there will be timer. And single timer means that we, we send four packets at a time. But we keep the timer for one packet. That is for the oldest one. For the first packet that is transmitted. So the individual timer, it is used in the individual acknowledgement. It is used for individual acknowledgement. Okay. And the cumulative acknowledgement, they use single timer. Both are okay. Both are better. Both have advantages and disadvantages. More timer means more complexity. Single timer means simplicity. Simple. Okay. But in the single timer and cumulative acknowledgement, the out of other packets are not stored. Out of other packets are discarded in the receiver. But in the individual timer, out of other packets are stored. So it won't be good. We will discuss them through an example. Okay. So, based, these are the challenges, four challenges. And based on these three challenges, these three alternatives, these three parameters, we, dis we divide the pipeline protocol into two types, go back in and select and wait. So the pipeline protocol, it is better than stop and wait, that is done. But however, the pipeline protocol has its own challenges, alternatives, design alternatives. So the first challenge is sequence number, it should be increased. And the second challenge is that whether we should send individual acknowledgement or we should send cumulative acknowledgement, whether we should have uh, a single timer or a, a single timer or we should have individual timer. So based on this, we have two approaches. Go back in and send it. So now we are going to discuss go back in, how it works in the pipeline protocol and select to repeat for pipeline protocol. Okay. So, we will discuss this select to repeat later on. So, in this video, in this class, we are going to discuss only go back in. Okay. In the go back in approach, okay, if you do remember here, go back in. It is red. So, go back in use cumulative acknowledgement. It need buffer at sender side, not at receiver side. It means that out of order packet are discarded and go back in. It use single timer. Select to repeat is in the blue color. 
So sorry to repeat, it used individual timer. It used timer for each packet that is transmitted. It has individual acknowledgement and it needs buffer at sender and receiver. It means that if the receiver when out of other packet are received, the select to repeat store them. Store them in the buffer. Okay. So the go back in approach, we can send uh, uh, in the go back in approach, the sender can have up to n unacknowledged packet in pipeline. What does it mean? The sender can send n number of packets at a time. A sender can send n number of packets at a time okay this is the first so and similarly in the select to repeat also the sender can send up to n number of packets at a time so they are same what is the difference the go back in it used cumulative acknowledgement the receiver only sends the cumulative acknowledgement what does it mean if it receives out of other packet, it doesn't acknowledge it. It discard it. If there is a gap, it if there is a gap. So when out of other packets are received, so those packets are not acknowledged. They are discarded. And the selective repeat it used individual acknowledgement. So when out of other packets are received, they are stored. They are stored. In the cumulative, in the go back in, it use single timer. Sender has timer for oldest unacknowledged packet. For example, the sender sends four packet. Packet one, two, three, four. So the sender will have the, the timer for packet number one. And when packet number one timer is expired, then packet one, two, three, four, all will be retransmitted. So when the timer is single timer is is, is, uh, is uh, uh, there is a single timer for all the transmitted packet. So it, when the timer expires, so all unacknowledged packet will be retransmitted. And the selective repeat when the when the timer is expired, the only that packet is retransmitted, not all the packets, not all the unacknowledged packets. Only because in the selective repeat we have individual timer. For each, for example, we send transmit packet one, two, three, four. So we will have timer for P one, timer for P two, timer for P three, and timer for P four. Timer one, two, three, four. So if the timer for P one is expired, then only P one will be retransmitted in the selective repeat. But in this go back end, P one, P two, P three, P four, all will be all unacknowledged packet will be retransmitted. Okay, so this is the overview. Let me explain this go back in through in detail through example. So you will come to know what does cumulative acknowledgement be means. Okay. So let me explain to you the go back in approach. Okay, through an example. Suppose the sender wants to send these packets. These are the it is the buffer at the transport layer. So the transport layer receives the data from application layer. So it divides it into packets. And each packet is assigned sequence number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. N is equal to 4 when the size. What does it mean? Because we are discussing pipeline protocol. So in pipeline protocol, multiple packets can be sent at a time. But how many? Suppose n, n number. So suppose n is equal to 4. It means that 4 packet can be sent at a time. 4 packet can be sent at a time unacknowledged. Okay, so these 0, 1, 2, 3, they are sent at a time. Okay, so this packet 0, 1, 2, 3, they will be transmitted. Okay, so when these packets are transmitted, so in the go back in, we have single timer. So the timer will be on for which packet. Okay. So these four packets, they are transmitted. P1, 2, 3, M. 0, 1, 2, 3. So these four packets are transmitted. So in the go back in approach, we have single timer. We have single timer. 
in the go back and approach we have single timer but the timer should be for oldest packet okay so in this case here how many packets are transmitted for p0 p1 p2 p3 so which one is the oldest p0 is the oldest unacknowledged oldest packet that is transmitted and its acknowledgement is not received this is the oldest packet so the timer will be set for this packet okay so the time out value is set for packet number zero and its timer is now stopped okay suppose packet zero is received correctly so it sends acknowledgement number zero okay so acknowledgement number zero means it is cumulative cumulative means that the packet up to sequence number zero they are received correctly and the receiver is now waiting for next packet with the sequence number one so you know here the cumulative acknowledgement means acknowledgement zero means that the packet up to sequence number zero they are received correctly okay so when this acknowledgement is arrived acknowledgement zero it means that packet zero is delivered correctly okay so its timer will be stopped its timer will be stopped and now because this packet is delivered correctly so the next this packet packet one is the oldest that is unacknowledged that is sent and its acknowledgement is not perceived so this will become the oldest one and that is unacknowledged okay so in this case this timer will be stopped and the timer will be set for p1 packet number one okay now the timer is running for packet number one and suppose packet one is also received correctly so it will send acknowledgement number one okay so it will now uh, when when packet number uh, when acknowledgement zero is arrived so it means that packet zero is delivered correctly so now we have three packets unacknowledged and we have n is equal to four that is we can send four packets at most so three packets are sent at a time and their acknowledgement is not received they are unacknowledged okay so we can send one more packet why because we can send four packets at a time unacknowledged so we can send packet number four okay now suppose that the packet number zero it is also received uh, packet number one is also received correctly at the receiver so the receiver will send acknowledgement number one because it is in order packet zero is received in order the receiver was waiting for packet number zero and now the receiver received packet number one so packet number zero after uh, after packet number zero we are waiting for packet number one so packet zero and one they are in sequence okay so these packet zero and one they will be delivered to the application as they are received and the receiver will send acknowledgement number one acknowledgement one even when it is received at the sender side it means that the data up to sequence number one is received correctly remember that in the go back and we use cumulative acknowledgement cumulative acknowledgement means when acknowledgement one is received it means the packet until one they are received correctly so it also acknowledge packet number zero as well okay so when acknowledgement one is received so it means the data up to one is received so it means that this packet is also received so its timer will be stopped okay so its timer will be stopped and now this packet becomes the oldest one unacknowledged so its timer will be stopped now the time out will be set for this packet okay now you can see that the time out value is set for packet number two okay and now how many packets are unacknowledged packet number two packet number three and packet number four so three packets are unacknowledged and we can send four packet at a time so we can send packet number five as well okay so packet number five is also transmitted packet number five is also transmitted now suppose this packet number two is lost packet number two is lost what does it mean when packet number two is lost and packet number three is received, so
so this is out of order why because the receiver has received packet number 0 1 so now it should receive packet number 2 packet with the sequence number 2 but it receives packet number 3 what does it mean it is out of order out of order means there is a gap there is a gap when it receives the data doesn't acknowledge packet if there is a gap there is a gap okay and we send cumulative acknowledgement cumulative acknowledgement okay so these two will be explained now okay so you can see that when packet number three is received so this is out of order so go back in it discard out of order packet it will be discarded it will be dropped but it will sense acknowledgement and go back in we use cumulative acknowledgement cumulative acknowledgement means the last packet that is received correctly in order so this acknowledgement one this is received correctly in order this is the last packet that is received correctly in order this is received correctly but this is not in order this is out of order and this is in order this is the last packet. so it will sense the acknowledgement for the last packet that is received correctly in order this is called cumulative acknowledgement why because if it sends packet number three acknowledgement number three so it means that the data up to three is received so data up to three means data with the sequence number 0 1 and 2 and 2 is not received so that's why it discarded it discarded and it sends the acknowledgement for what for the last packet that is received correctly in order this is called cumulative acknowledgement so it will send acknowledgement number one why because this is the packet that is received last incorrect uh, last correctly in order so its acknowledgement is acknowledgement number one. So acknowledgement one one will be retransmitted. Okay. So you can see that here we receives acknowledgement number one, and this acknowledgement one it is duplicate because acknowledgement one is already received. So this is duplicate. So duplicate acknowledgement they are ignored by the sender. They are ignored by the sender. Okay. Similarly, <coughs> packet number four is received. It is received correctly so it is again out of order why because the receiver is waiting for packet number two so this is packet number four so through sequence number it can come to know that this is also out of order so out of order packet are discarded and acknowledgement will be sent why for the last packet that is received correctly in order okay so in this case it will send acknowledgement number one so this is mean cumulative acknowledgement in go back and use cumulative acknowledgement okay similarly when this acknowledgement is received at the sender it will ignore acknowledgement one is already received so duplicate acknowledgement are ignored similarly when packet number five is received there is it is received correctly but its sequence number is five and the receiver is waiting for packet number two so it is again out of order so out of order packets are discarded they are dropped but it will sense acknowledgement acknowledgement for what cumulative cumulative means the last packet that is received correctly in order so this is the packet that is received correctly in order so it is acknowledgement number one so it will send acknowledgement number one when this acknowledgement one is received so again this is duplicate so it will be ignored okay so what will happen so since this packet since this packet number two it is lost and this time out is started so when this time out is expired because we are not receiving its acknowledgement so its time out will be expired so when its time out is expired so in the go back in we have discussed that we use single timer and then the single timer is for the oldest packet that is unacknowledged and when the timer is expired then the all packets that is unacknowledged they are retransmitted. 
So this packet 2 is unacknowledged, so it will be retransmitted. Packet 3 is unacknowledged, it will be retransmitted. Packet 4 is unacknowledged, it will be retransmitted. Packet 5 is unacknowledged, it will be retransmitted. Though it is in acknowledgement number 1. So acknowledgement number 1 is not for the acknowledgement of this packet. Acknowledgement number 1 means that the data of 2 packet number 1 is received correctly. So this acknowledgement 1 that is received duplicate, it is acknowledging this data again and again. Okay, so go back in. In this case, when the timeout is expired, so these uh, all the packet that are unacknowledged, they will be retransmitted. So packet number two, three, four, and five, they will be retransmitted. Okay, so when the timeout is expired, okay, so what we do in the go back in? So we have discussed it that when the timer expired. All unacknowledged packets are retransmitted. Okay, all unacknowledged packets are retransmitted. Okay, so did so this is the case. Okay, so when the base packet two time out is expired, this timer is expired. So all packets are retransmitted. All packets means that the all unacknowledged packets, these are acknowledged packets, they are already acknowledged, they are delivered. So the timeout is set for the oldest that is unacknowledged. So in this case, from the oldest unacknowledged packet, all unacknowledged packets will be retransmitted. It is packet number two, packet number three, four, and five. They will be retransmitted. When packet two is received, so it is in order. Why? Because packet one, zero, one is received. So this is in order. So it will be delivered to the application and acknowledgement two will be transmitted. Okay. Again, when these four packets are transmitted, the timer will be set for the oldest packet. So, what is the oldest packet? Packet number two, that is un unacknowledged oldest packet. So, the timer will be set one single timer. Okay. So, when it's, it is received at the receiver, packet two is received at the receiver, so it will be delivered to the application because it is in order. Because packet 0, 1 are received, so up to now the receiver is waiting for packet number 2. So now packet 2 is arrived, so it will be delivered to application. It will send acknowledgement number 2. Similarly, uh, when the packet number 3 is arrived, okay, so when it is arrived, okay, when uh, uh, it's acknowledgement is arrived, so its timeout will be stopped and the timeout will be set for this packet, okay. And now when the packet number 3 is received, Correctly, so it is also in order because packet two is already received, so it will deliver the application and it will send come to acknowledgement three. Three means that the data up to sequence number three is received correctly at the receiver. That is when acknowledgement three means that the packet with the sequence number zero, one, two, they are received and three they are received correctly. So this acknowledgement three doesn't acknowledge only packet number three, but it also acknowledges zero, one, two. The packet with the sequence number 0, 1, 2, and 3. Four packets. Okay. This is called cumulative acknowledgement. Okay. So when this acknowledgement is received, packet acknowledgement number 3, so its timeout will be also uh, stopped. And now the timeout will be set for the oldest packet, that is packet number 4. Okay. Similarly, when acknowledgement number 4 is arrived, so its timeout will be stopped. And now the timer will be set for the packet number 5 okay so when the acknowledgement number 5 is arrived by the packet number 5 is received so it is in order because packet 4 is already received 3 2 and 0 1 so they are in order so it will be delivered to the application and it will since cumulate to acknowledgement 5 5 means that the data up to sequence number 5 is received correctly at zero. so the acknowledgement 5 doesn't only acknowledge the 5 but it also acknowledge the previous packet 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay so when it is received, so the timer will be stopped. And now, because there is no unacknowledged packet, so the time is timer is stopped. Okay. So this is the working of go back in and action. Okay. So we have discussed the pipeline protocol and to uh, the example of go back in. Okay. So by this way, the uh, this lecture now ends, and the next lecture we will study uh, then other topics. Okay.